Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. In this presentation, we are going to discuss problem 1 on signal flow graphs. So, let's get started. In the signal flow graph of figure, the gain C over R will be. One signal flow graph is given to us and we need to find out the gain C over R. This is a multiple choice question and was asked in GATE EC 1991 given by IIT Madras. So I want you all to pause this video and try this problem on your own. And if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. I hope you are done. So moving on to the solution. In order to find out the gain C over R, we need to apply the Mason's gain formula in this signal flow graph. For simplicity, let us name these nodes as W, X, Y, and Z. Now, our first step in Mason's gain rule is to identify the forward paths. And to find out the forward paths, we need to start from the input node R and move towards the output node C. So, if we start from this input node R and move to this node W via this branch, and then if we move to this node X, then after that if we move to this node Y, and if we follow this path to move towards the node C, then this will be the forward path. So our first forward path will be R, W, X, Y, Z, C. Moreover, if we start from this node R and if we move to this node W via this branch and now if we take this branch to move towards the node Z and then finally if we move towards the node C then this will be the second forward path. So our second forward path is R, W, Z, C. So now we are done with the identification of forward paths and we know we have two forward paths in this signal flow graph. We will now move on to the calculation of forward path gain. So the forward path gain of first forward path will be the product of these five branches. It will be 1 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 4 multiplied with 1. So the forward path gain of first forward path will be 24. Now, if we want to calculate the forward path gain of second forward path, we need to multiply the gains of these three branches. So, it will be 1 multiplied with 5 multiplied with 1. So, the forward path gain of second forward path will be equal to 5. And in this way, we are done with the calculation of forward path gain. We will now move on to the identification of individual loops in this signal flow graph and then the calculation of individual loop gain. So the first individual loop L1 in this signal flow graph is W, X, W. If we start from this node W and move to this node X via this branch and then move back to this node W via this branch, then it will form a loop. So our first loop is W, X, W. And the gain of this loop will be the product of these two branches. It will be 2 multiplied with minus 1, which is equal to minus 2. Now, if you observe this portion of SFG, and if we start from this node X, and then if we move towards this node Y via this branch, and then move back to this node X via this branch, then it will form a loop. So our second loop L2 is x, y, x and the loop gain of this loop will be the product of these two branches. It will be equal to 3 multiplied with minus 1 which will be equal to minus 3. Similarly, the third loop will be y, z, y and the gain of this loop L3 will be the product of these two branches. It will be equal to 4 multiplied with minus 1, which will be equal to minus 4. Now, if you observe carefully, there is one more loop in this signal flow graph. If we start from this node W and take this branch to move to the node Z, then if we move to this node Y via this branch, then if we take this branch to move towards the node X, and then if we move to this node W via this branch, then it will form a loop. So the fourth loop L4 of this signal flow graph will be W, Z, Y, 
x w and the gain of this loop will be the multiplication of these four branches so it will be equal to 5 multiplied with minus 1 multiplied with minus 1 multiplied with minus 1 and it will be equal to minus 5 we can see that while traversing this loop we started from the node w and then we end up in the node w and no node is traversed more than once so this is a valid node and the gain of this loop is minus 5 so now we are done with the identification of individual loops and the calculation of individual loop gains and we know we have four different loops in this signal flow graph now if i ask you that do we have any non-touching loops in this sfg yes if you observe these two loops w x w and y z y these two loops are non-touching loops because they do not have any node as common so we can say that the loops l1 and l3 are non-touching loops now we will move on to the calculation of determinant of sfg now moving on to the calculation of determinant of sfg delta and we know that delta equal to 1 minus of sum of all the individual loop gains plus sum of products of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops minus sum of products of all possible combinations of three non-touching loops and so on in this signal flow graph we have four individual loops and that's why the sum of four individual loops will be l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l4 in this signal flow graph we have a pair of non-touching loops and that's why there is one possible combination of pair of non-touching loops which is l1 multiplied with l3 and that's why the product of gains of these two loops will be l1 l3 moreover we do not have any pair of three non-touching loops and that's why the gain of three non-touching loops will be equal to zero and hence the rest factors in the formula will also be equal to zero now if we put all the values in this equation we will have delta equal to 1 minus of minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 the value of l1 is equal to minus 2 the value of l2 is equal to minus 3 the value of l3 is equal to minus 4 and the value of l4 is equal to minus 5 Moving on, the product of gains of L1 and L3 will be equal to minus 2 multiplied with minus 4, which will be equal to 8. Now, if we solve this, we will have the value of delta equal to 1 plus 14 plus 8, which is equal to 23. So, now we are done with the calculation of determinant of SFG. We will now move on to the calculation of associate path factors. And we know that if we want to calculate the associate path factors, we have to erase the forward path. Since there are two forward paths, there will be two associated path factors. So, moving on to the calculation of delta 1. In order to calculate the associated path factor with respect to the forward path 1, we need to eliminate the forward path P1. So, we have this signal flow graph given in the problem and the forward path 1 is r w x y z c and if we eliminate or erase this forward path the signal flow graph will look like this now we need to identify the remaining isolated loops but we can see here there is no loop remaining since all the nodes are destroyed so we can say that the number of isolated loops is equal to 0 and we know that for any forward path, if the number of isolated loops is equal to 0, then the associated path factor with respect to that path is equal to 1. Let us calculate this with the formula. We know that delta 1 is equal to 1 minus of gain of individual isolated loops plus product of gains of all possible combinations of two isolated non-touching loops and so on. But in this case, the number of isolated loops is equal to 0. And hence, the gain of all the isolated loops will be 0. And we have the value of delta 1 equal to 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. And that's what we discussed. 
If the number of isolated loops for a given forward path is equal to 0, then the associated path factor with respect to that path is equal to 1. So now we are done with the calculation of associated path factor delta 1. We will now move on to the calculation of associated path factor delta 2. So moving on to the calculation of delta 2 and in order to calculate delta 2, we need to eliminate the forward path P2. Let us consider the signal flow graph one more time and we know that the forward path P2 is R, W, Z, C. And if we eliminate or erase this forward path, the signal flow graph will look like this. Now observe this signal flow graph carefully and check for the remaining loop. We can see that this node of this loop is destroyed and this node of this loop is destroyed and that's why these two loops are destroyed. But if you observe this loop, it is complete. No node and no branch is destroyed. So this is one isolated loop which is present in this signal flow graph and if you want to calculate the isolated loop gain, it will be equal to the product of these two branches which is equal to minus 3. Now calculating the associated path factor delta 2 which is equal to 1 minus of individual isolated loop gain and we have only one isolated loop with a gain minus 3. So we have delta 2 equal to 4. So the associated path factor with respect to second forward path is equal to 4. In this way, we are done with the calculation of forward path gain P1 which is equal to 24 and the associated path factor with respect to this forward path delta 1 which is equal to 1, the forward path gain P2 which is equal to 5 and the associated path factor with respect to this path delta 2 which is equal to 4 and the determinant of SFG delta which is equal to 23. Putting all these equations in Mason's gain formula, we have C over R equal to summation from K equal to 1 to 2, PK multiplied with del K over delta. Since the number of forward paths in this signal flow graph is equal to 2, that's why the value of N is equal to 2. So if we open this summation, we will have P1 multiplied with delta 1 plus P2 multiplied with delta 2 over delta. Now, if we substitute all these values in this equation, we will have 24 multiplied with 1 plus 5 multiplied with 4 over 23. And if we solve this, we will have the value of C over R equal to 44 divided by 23. And this is the answer to the problem, which is option D. So now we are done with this problem, we will discuss some more problems based on signal flow graphs in the upcoming lectures. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture, I'll end this one here, see you in the next lecture.